The nation is moving toward a government shutdown, and House Republicans, they are wasting your time. On September 17th, news broke that a group of moderate or Main Street Republicans and some members of the House Freedom Caucus brokered a short-term deal to fund the government before the September 30th deadline. And that would avert a shutdown. But only for one month. Meaning we will go through all of this drama again right before Halloween. I think that's really scary. The bill makes major concessions to the demands of House Freedom Caucus members, including an 8% domestic spending cut, with exceptions for the military and veterans. It also includes more of the Secure the Border Act of 2023, including the completion of the wall at the southern border. I thought Mexico was going to pay for the wall. It also includes further restrictions to asylum access and increase in border agents and more extreme requirements for detaining people crossing the border. The bill, frankly, never stood a chance of passing the Democratic-led Senate. In fact, as of now, it won't even pass the House. Even if all Republicans are in the chamber, the resolution can only spare four Republican no votes to pass. Well, at least nine House Republicans have already said they will vote no on the package. And that includes Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, one of Speaker McCarthy's most devoted allies. It is more cold water on House Speaker McCarthy's hopes to avoid more humiliation, and this time in the form of a government shutdown. In a pointed message to critics of the legislation, McCarthy said this, if you're not willing to pass appropriation bills and you're not willing to pass a continuing resolution to allow you to pass the rest of the bills, the appropriation bills, and you don't want an omnibus, I don't quite know what you want. So we just have to get together, figure it out, and move forward. Mm. Tough potatoes. Well, every member of Congress will still get paid if the government shuts down, but hundreds of thousands of federal government employees across the country will not, at least not until after the shutdown ends. How many people can afford to miss weeks or even months of paychecks? Uncle Sam employs around 2 million Americans. I'm talking about real people with families to support. And whether you're a federal employee or not, if this shutdown comes to pass, you will be affected too. Just think about the last shutdown in 2019. Flights across the country were delayed due to staff reductions and air traffic controllers. Some of our nation's most popular monuments and pristine parks, they were overwhelmed with garbage because there was no one to care for them. Food safety inspections were brought to a halt for more than a month. Do y'all remember the poopy shrimp? The, shrimp, the poopy lettuce? Contingency plans from the Office of Management and Budget give us some clues for what agencies will do if the government shuts down again. With thousands of Americans on strike, all but 13 of the 1,200 employees at the National Labor Relations Board would be furloughed. Case handling would cease. Back pay and litigation would be impacted. At the Department of Education, well, reviews of grant applications and awarding of funds would stop. Its Office of Civil Rights wouldn't be able to investigate civil rights complaints like the one currently happening at Harvard. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission would not conduct inspections, decommissioning activities for nuclear reactors, or trainings. Folks, that's just three agencies out there of more than 100 agencies. And these are agencies you may have never heard of, but these are agencies that we rely on, agencies that are important to our country. And thanks to this schism among House, House Republicans, we are looking at a potential government shutdown and a baseless impeachment inquiry against President Biden. Well, here's what House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries had to say about what Republicans are doing right now. The House Republican Civil War is hurting hardworking American taxpayers and limiting our ability to be able to solve problems on their behalf. It's unfortunate but as House Democrats, we're going to continue to try to find common ground with the other side of the aisle to work with Senate Democrats and Senate Republicans and President Biden. Republicans championed the idea of a limited government, but since they took control, the only aspect of government that House Republicans have limited is its ability to serve the people who fund it. People like you and me.